Here I'm going to show you how to use data validation in Excel and it's a great feature that allows you to control what a user can input into a cell. So let's say the number must be between a certain range or you can only input a max of five characters into a cell or you want to have a dash for the fourth character of a part number. It must be there. Well that's what you can control with data validation. Also, I'll show you a couple cool things you can do with it as well. Like when you click a cell, it'll tell you what you have to input into the cell. If you input an incorrect value, let's say six characters here, you can actually override the limitation and go ahead and input it, but then we'll combine it with something else that shows you there is an error there. So it highlights it red, and when you fix it, all is good. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a sample input form that we have here, and we're just going to work with these three cells. But you could do this on an entire data table or a data set. You can apply data validation to entire columns. You're not limited to just a couple cells like this. All right, I'll clear the form and get started with some examples. So now we have a blank form here. There is no data validation in these cells. We are good to go. And if you want to know how to get to this look, by the way, just add some borders to some cells, go to the View tab, and uncheck grid lines. It does wonders. It'll take you about three seconds, and then you have a nice, neat little form. All right, so let's go with this field. First, I'm just going to show you what you can do with data validation. So select a cell, and then you can go to the Data tab, and click this little dude down here, and it will open the data validation window. Or what I'm going to use for this tutorial is the keyboard shortcut Alt-D-L. There might be a newer keyboard shortcut, but I've been using this one for years, and it's easy to do. So Alt-D-L, and you get the data validation window. So data validation just means to validate data that a user is inputting into a cell in Excel. It basically just limits it. So you can control what they're going to input. And you control all of that on the Settings tab right here under Allow. So click here where it says Any Value. That's the default. And you can see what we can control. We can control whole numbers, decimals, lists, which are pretty cool. It allows you to make drop-down lists in the cell. Dates, times, text length, which is what we're going to use here. Or custom, which is what we'll use towards the end of the tutorial for the part number. It's pretty cool. allows you to put in a little formula and control whatever you want. If you click one of these options, you get other options. So here we can choose between, not between, lots of options here. Let's say less than, and let's say maximum 10. So now, if I hit OK, the user can only input a number that is less than 10 in this cell. So let's go ahead and test that out real quick before we finish up the form. If I hit 9, I'm good. If I hit 10, which is not less than 10, error, this value doesn't match the data validation restrictions. Notice this isn't terrifically helpful like I showed you in the intro. I'll show you how to change that in a moment. But this one requires you to either retry it or cancel to go back. Let's hit Alt-D-L to go back to that. So you can see that data validation is really, really easy to apply to cells. And now we've just made it so that a user has to enter a number less than 10 in this cell. And if I went and locked the worksheet, then they wouldn't be able to remove the data validation. But we're going to stick with data validation for this tutorial. Let's try out another example. Let's say we want to go for decimal. And you can see it works exactly the same, except for now we can do, let's say, 10.5. And here I could do 10.4, all's good. But once I make it up to 10.5, that. So you may think, well, why don't I just do that from whole number? Here it's not going to allow you to put in 10.5, or it just won't apply. So here, decimal values cannot be used for whole number conditions. So they have used data validation in our data validation window. <laughs> but before I get to this specific example here with the form, I do want to show you the list real quick. Where are we? The allow list. This is pretty cool. There are so many things you can do with this. I'm not going to cover them here. And let's say I want to put three items in here. Green, 
yellow, blue. Hit OK. And I get three items, green, yellow, blue. So that's a pretty cool data validation thing. A lot of people who want to do drop down menus like this don't think, oh, I should go to data validation, but that's where you do it. Now let's get to what we want to do here. So for this particular field, I want to limit the user to a text length less than or equal to five. All right, let us test this out, make sure everything's good, and then we will apply the other options to make this actually useful. Because as a blank cell right here, it's not that useful. If you, the user inputs something and sees an error, it's quite annoying. So everything's good, right? And then the user goes to input six. Error. It tells you that it didn't match the data validation restrictions, but it doesn't tell you what they were. So maybe the user thinks it's a number-based restriction. Maybe they don't realize it's text-based. So here I could input text. And then the moment I go for six, we get the issue. So let's make it actually helpful for the user now. Alt-DL. And this is where we go to input message. It is a great thing. And so many people use data validation without this, and they should not. So let us say username max length five. Make the title whatever you want. The username cannot be longer than five characters. Hit OK. And now, whenever we select the cell, it's going to tell us, hey, username max length five, the username cannot be longer than five characters. So if I go away, click any other cell in the worksheet, it's not there. It doesn't appear if I hover over it, but the moment you select it to input something in the cell, bam, then you get the message, tells you what to do. So that's helpful, but we still want to change this guy. So let us Alt DL, and let's go to the final tab, error alert. You have three different types down here, and it's not just a style, it's stop, warning, and information. So for the stop, that actually prevents you from inputting the value. And we could say username max length five. Hit OK. And now when you go to input more than five, username max length five, not allowed. So that is a helpful error message. Very nice. But if we want to do like I showed in the intro and allow the user to break our rules, we can go ahead and choose warning. Now let's see what happens. If I hit OK, I change nothing else. Let's put the second G. Username, max length five, continue. Yes, no, maybe so. So if I hit cancel, it goes back to what it was before I input the value. Continue, yes, it allows me to break the data validation rule. And I'll show you how to highlight this red after that, because it could be helpful to allow the user to break the rule. So let's put it in again to break the rule. Continue, no. But that's OK. And Alt-DL back here to error alert. Let's put it on the information style and see the difference there. All right. Username max length 5. OK. So it tells you, but it doesn't stop you from inputting anything there. The information one can be helpful, depends what you need to do. But what I am going to do here is switch it back to a warning and let us say max length allowed five. If you input a value that has more than five characters, it will be truncated when the value is saved. So put a message that will be useful for your situation. Here I'm just going to say you can input more than five characters if you want, but anything after five is just going to be removed when we hit the save button down here. So we hit OK, and let us make a username a better one, Thanos. If you input a value more than five, it'll be truncated when the value is saved. Continue. Yes. Okay. Sure. So what that means basically is just that if I was going to save it, the S would be taken off. 
All right, back that up so we get our S. And now let us highlight this in red so we can show the user you have an error. I let you put the value in, but it's going to cause a problem later on. And that is not data validation. So we've used all of the features in the data validation window. And if you use data validation, I think that you should use all three of these tabs to make it so it's actually useful. But now we want to highlight the value if we allow them to input it incorrectly. So we go to conditional formatting for that. But before we go to conditional formatting, there are many options up here. But most of the time, they're not going to allow you to do many useful things for this situation. So here, I want to make sure the user doesn't input anything greater than 5, or I show them an error if they do. We're going to use a very simple formula for conditional formatting for that, a custom formula or a custom rule. And to do that, you just have to create a formula that will output true or false. And you want it to output true when you want the formatting changes to appear. So if they break our rule, we want red to appear. So when they break our rule, we need a formula that returns true. So we use the len function to tell us how many characters are in the cell. We get six. So our rule is broken, which means that we want it to return true. So all that we're going to do is put a little comparison operator at the end and say five. So if it has more than five characters in this cell, it has broken our rule. We want to show formatting, so it must return true from this formula. Greater than five returns true. And let us make it less than five, false. So that is the switch that will turn on the conditional formatting. And when I do this, hit yes, you will see false change to true. And there we have our lovely little switch. Let's go ahead and put dollar signs in front of this just to make it more difficult for conditional formatting to break our formula. And we will copy this and delete this. We don't need it anymore. Then select this guy, go to conditional formatting. We will go to new rule, then go to use a formula to determine which cells to format. Go down here, paste in the rule, control V, don't click anything else, don't click anywhere in the worksheet or use the arrow keys. It's very easy to mess up what you paste in here. Just go straight to the format button and choose the format that you would like to have when they break our rule. Well, for us, this is an error. So I want to show something with red, but you have many options up here. You could just change the font or the border number. So make it formatted however you want it to be formatted, then hit OK. Hit OK. And there we go. So we've broken the rule. It is now red. Let us empty the cell. The red goes away. How great is that? One, two, three, four, five. No problem. Go in there for the six. Do you want to do this? It's going to be truncated if you do this. Yes, I do. Uh oh, look there. It's bright red. Not a good thing. So that is how data validation is so great and how you can add just a tiny little bit of conditional formatting to it to make it really pop and to make it so much better. So now let's quickly add some conditional or some data validation down here for the number. Let us go to settings and let's say it's a whole number and we want it to be less than 999. Okay, great. Input message less than 999 must be less than 999 error alert and let's say we don't allow them to break this rule you probably shouldn't put the error in the title but for some reason I'm doing that in this example all right so now one, two, three, good to go. And let's add in a fourth one. Must be less than 999. All right, awesome. And the last thing I want to show you is how to do a custom data validation. And I'm going to do this one a little bit quickly or briefly. I'm going to make it kind of simple. But you can make an entire course just on doing custom data validation because 
just like I showed you to do with a conditional formatting, where we needed a formula that returned true or false, we're going to do the same thing for the custom formulas for data validation. We need a formula that will return true if the input value is good and false if the input value is bad. And then data validation will use that true or false value to do what we did up here, to say, yes, you can input that. No, you cannot input that. So let's input some good sample data here. Let's say ASC-1. And let's say that our only requirement is that you have a dash, and then you have one character after the dash. And the dash must be in position number four. So let's make our sample formulas over here. And let us get to where the dash should be. So I'm going to use the mid function, just a simple text function here to extract some text. So we select the cell, and start number will be 4, because the dash should be in position 4, and 1, because we want one character. And let's close it up. It gets in the dash. Perfect. Now let us see if this equals a dash, because we need it to equal true or false. So equals and we do a little dash, put the dash or the text characters between quotation marks, and since we use the comparison operator, the equal sign here, we will get a true or false result now. Does it equal a dash? Yes, it does. Let us take the dash out. Now it does not. So now we know that the dash must be in position 4, and I want something after the dash. Well, there are a bunch of different ways you could check for that. Let's say a simple one is just to check the length of the cell. Let's say that we want to make sure. Let's just do that right there, make sure it's good. Five. I want to make sure that it is greater than four. Or you could say equals five, because we just want one character after the dash. So the dash must be in position four. And there must be five characters. That means one character after position four. So everything is good here. Let's remove the one. Now it is bad. Now it doesn't say it has to be a number at the end. It can be any value in this case. It just has to have something after the dash. So now we have our, let's actually just put it back to one. I like the way that looks. We have our two formulas and they return true and false. And what we want to do now is to put them within an AND function. So equals AND, one there. Close it up. Go for the second one. Copy him. Go over here. Go to the end, comma, paste it in. And there we go. So now we have created a custom data validation rule that meets our requirements. Perfect. And you always want to test it out before you pop it into data validation, which is what I was just doing there. So let us go here. I will put in some dollar signs to make sure it does not change. And select everything. Go here. Alt DL settings, custom this time, and there we have formula, paste it in, don't do anything else, go straight to the input message, and say, format required, must have a dash for the fourth character, and must be five characters in length. Error alert. Let us go ahead and stop. Let's give it a good title, error this time. And let's just say incorrect format. Check the input message. Let's say required format. All right, format required must have a dash for the fourth character and five characters in a length. Let's input the wrong thing. Incorrect format, check the input message for the required format, and there's our input message. Life is good, everybody is happy. 
And you can see these change when we input the incorrect and the correct value. So it's always a good idea to just leave them there up until the moment that your worksheet is good and you want to go ahead and just delete them. So now we have three cells that control what the user can input into them. And this is going to be such a big help for keeping our data set clean and uncorrupted. Because presumably what you're going to do next is click the Save button and have this data taken from here and put onto a data worksheet. And that's something that I cover in my forums course on teachexcel.com in great detail. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link in the description for this video. But that's all for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.